I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 6th of September, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be talking about the going out culture that everyone has here in Nicaragua. We're going to get to that right after the bump. <laughs> On yesterday's episode, we had a chance to go walking around, do some nice scenes, and talk about the dating situation for expats here in Nicaragua. And that leads us to today's topic, which is about the culture of going out and, and living life out at uh, events and activities outside and away from the home that goes on here. And we're gonna get to that right after I move the camera because the large plant that it's up against has started blowing and is knocking into the camera. And so we need to adjust it just a little bit. Minor adjustment, but much better. So here in Nicaragua, it is a huge part of the culture to go out all the time. And I talk about this nonstop. So if you watch my channel, you are familiar that I say this all the time, but we don't really talk about it specifically all that often. And the thing that's really sets aside, when you come to Nicaragua, at first, you're probably going to be very isolated and it's just natural when you travel to any new place you're going to be in a hotel and spend some time on your own or you're going to get an apartment and kind of decompress and be like okay i'm in my space i'm going to do my thing and during that time you'll generally fall into a little bit of exploration in a very touristy way generally and you may fall into a bit of a, your own patterns especially if you get an apartment you may very quickly be like okay i'm just gonna pop on my netflix i'm gonna get my frozen pizza that i often get i'm gonna do these things that i do all the time and not really think about doing things in a Nicaraguan way, I'm just gonna do what I'm used to. And that's absolutely normal and it's absolutely fine. But when you start getting past that, when you spend a little bit of time, you've decompressed and you want to start exploring Nicaraguan culture. And for some people, this is gonna be just a day or two. For other people, it could be a year or two that you start being like, okay, I'm gonna get out of my shell, I'm gonna get out of my own world. And for some people, you're gonna end up either in an enclave or maybe you live on a farm or maybe you're just really dedicated to doing your own thing. Maybe you're super introverted and you're going to resist going out and doing the Nicaraguan thing because it's not what interests you. So those people exist, that's possible, but for the vast majority of you, and you know who you are, probably, you're going to at some point, whether very quickly or relatively quickly, you're going to say, you know what, I want to start experiencing Nicaragua and not just as a tourist, not just going to the Florida Cana uh, distillery tour, not just going to Volcano Board, not just going to take photos on the, the, the roof of the cathedral, not just heading out to Granada to do the chocolate museum tour, whatever. When you start being like, I want to go to my local activity, I want to do things with my neighbors, I want to do things with friends that I've met here, then your activities are going to generally turn very heavily towards going out and shopping, going out to get food, going out for drinks, live music, karaoke, dancing, and, and so forth. Those are the kinds of activities, maybe going to church as well. Those are the types of activities you're very likely to encounter as part of everyday life here in Nicaragua. And for Nicaraguans, whether uh, Nicaraguense who are born here, or for those of us who are expats that are here long term, <laughs> I'm letting this, there's constantly a dog drinking out of one of these, and I swear they have water in the house. And uh, as those of us who live here, who have been here for a long time, who are attempting to be part of the culture, and this is true for those who speak Spanish and for those who don't, and hopefully those who don't are attempting to learn, but we understand that that can take a really long time, so many years for most people, especially if you're an adult, uh, to start learning Spanish. That's very, very difficult, but you know, start, do as many words as you can and, you know, do Duolingo for free, get a tutor and do your best, right? You will see progress, especially living in a place like Nicaragua because you're, you're surrounded by it. You hear it all the time. It's going to move you forward in a way that living uh, somewhere that doesn't speak Spanish and trying to learn those things will do. Uh, so in going out, so if this is for just about everyone, going out to any place, whether it's your local bar or a kind of nicer restaurant or a venue for an event, whatever. It could be a wedding event, right? We did, did one of those a couple of weeks ago. We've been to some event centers for other types of events uh, at different times, even going to cultural centers or uh, the theater or anything like that. Every one of these things steeps you into the culture just a little bit more. And that commonality in the culture, more than anything, 
is going out and being out, being seen, being social, being out in groups of people, that drives the Nicaraguan experience more than anything else in my experience. Uh, now, of course, if you live in San Juan del Sur, you're gonna feel so much less of that. Every time I go to San Juan del Sur, I, I, it starts dropping off. I start feeling the Costa Rican, like, stay home enclave feeling, right? That's partially what drives people towards San Juan del Sur. If you're looking to get away, if you're worried about or you're not interested in the culture of most of Nicaragua, where you're going out and being social all the time, then that, that far southern reach really has a drop-off in that culture. It never goes away. Certainly, I've been in San Juan del Sur and gone out with the local bars and had all that, like, everyone getting together, and it's just, and then there's the people who came from other places, they're off uh, doing their own thing and not being so social. But, the, but even there, right, even the little bits of time that I'm in San Juan del Sur, I end up in groups of people, whether Nicaraguense or expats or, or combined, that are going out and at least getting dinner together or at least going to a trivia night together or whatever. And, and so there's still, it's, it's not as strong, but it is still certainly there. It is a real thing. And, and the longer you're in Nicaragua, I think the more you're gonna experience that everywhere you go and you start to expect it, right? If I go to Granada and visit my friend Josie Mar in Granada, instantly the question is, okay, where are we going tonight, right? It's not like when I'm in the States and it's like, we're not going anywhere tonight, right? No, 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 it is absolutely assumed where are we going tonight? Well, if it's this night of the week, we're going to trivia. If it's this night of the week, we're going to karaoke. And if it's any of the other nights of the week, we're gonna go find either some combination of live music or dancing, unless there's some real special event to go see. Every time, everywhere we go, that's what happens. Um, now, if we're just going to, say, Madagalpa, and we're just taking the kids, we're going up for a food thing or for a work thing, well, then we may be like, okay, we're tired, we're gonna go back to the hotel and just crash, and that's fine, right? Um, but Nicaraguans will very rarely do that, right? If they're somewhere, they're gonna take that opportunity to go out, because that's the experience, it's what you do. And, and so that learning to kind of grok that, to internalize that this is what it means to be part of the Nicaraguan experience uh, is, is often very jarring, very unexpected for those of us coming from North America, Western Europe. Um, it, is, it is such a surprise part of the culture. And even compared to uh, other parts of Latin America, like far south, like Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, uh, or the far north, like Mexico, while they have much more going out culture than in the United States or Canada, they don't have it like the middle of, of Latin America, the, the Nicaraguas, the Panamas, the Colombias, right? There's so much activity in this zone. It is so cultural to just, it's time to go out. And, and home is where you sleep. You only go home to crash into your bed. You don't go home to hang out. Uh, it's not really, I mean, you can, but it's not really not what you do. Uh, and this defines just so much of the experience, so much of what you expect to encounter when you do things here uh, and I think that um, planning for that and internalizing that, and really, really thinking about that is important because when you visualize your life in Nicaragua, of course, I, it's important to say this, you can make it what you want it to be. If you want it to be a place where you come and play video games and you never leave the house, you're gonna you know, play Dungeons and Dragons every day and, and that's your thing and you don't want to go dancing, of course you can do that. And of course it, it's easy to do here because you can get food delivered and everything costs less and, the, and it's nice and, and you can easily set up space for that and the space is cheaper and like anything you want to do, almost anything you want to do becomes easier to do here because everything is easier, but not everything, almost everything. Um, but, but the culture around you is always going to be, wait, you didn't go out? Why are, why aren't you coming out? Aren't you going to participate in these things with other people? There's always going to be that pressure, always that opportunity that if you're in, say, the United States, you often would not encounter. You simply don't have people around you who are going out all the time. But here, literally, even with a very small group of friends that you would have quite quickly, you will almost certainly find that you're going to have someone or a large number of people who are like, hey, I'm going out tonight. You want to come with me? Hey, this is where I'm going. Feel free to join. Hey, if I happen to see you, this is where I'll be. And that kind of stuff is just normal. That's expected. Everyone talks to each other all throughout the day. People are super social. And the idea that you're going to go out and meet your friends and meet new people is absolutely completely normal, completely the thing you do. And the only time you don't is either when you have just an 
outrageous amount of work, which is not that common uh, and can't, or you're so short on funds or you live so far out that it becomes a major hurdle and you don't do it as often because you simply can't afford to do so. Uh, you know, you have a small child at home, you, uh, but even then it's, it's so expected that a family member will take care of your kids, someone who's much older and not going out very often, but even people who are quite a bit older, right? People in their fifties and sixties will go out regularly, maybe not five nights a week, like someone in their 20s or 30s, but that they're gonna go out and still participate in society is completely normal. When we go to geckos, right, it'll vary. If we go to 23 bar, which is a university bar, the average age is in the low to mid 20s. There's plenty of people in their 40s, but there's the majority of people are somewhere between 18 and 25 because it's a university bar that is the focus and it's a loud reggaeton dance club. So you totally expect that the crowd is going to shift towards the younger side. But if we go to geckos, we get exactly the opposite. You get all the people who don't want to go dancing in a place like that. You get the people who go to see cumbia bands. That's the traditional Colombian uh, like street music, which if you heard it, it is exactly what you would expect from Columbia's type street music. It is very, very popular here. They're big bands uh, and they play and people get up and dance and you eat and you, and it's a lot of people over 50 specifically going to see those bands uh, and, and they tend to dance and it's a very different, it's not a dance club where you got a bunch of singles just in a crowd crashing into each other. It's couples and friends who get up and dance between tables at a restaurant, but that they're getting out and doing that even when they're in their 50s or 60s and sometimes 70s is absolutely absolutely expected. You have no inhibitions to uh, any age, any social group going out and interacting and just go dancing. And it doesn't matter if you're on your own, people will dance with you. It, you can take people and you go dancing. And sometimes you go to places that are meant for dancing, like La Fabrica here in town, every Thursday has a salsa night and you salsa dance, but other places just have standard dancing. There's a re uh, bar and restaurant over on the, uh, near the Paseo Real, where they have an upstairs giant dance floor. They have a DJ and they play a wide variety of music, including a lot of like 80s music and people dance, but it's not wild dance uh, club like 23 Bar, which is university students. And it's not like the, the older folks at a Cumbia place, it's in between. It's a lot of late 30s, mostly 40s and some early 50s that are the mainstays of that place. And of course, all these places have people of all ages and a lot of places that are quite a bit uh, older will also bring younger kids with them. So you might have like the, the 15 to 18 year olds who are hanging out with their family, but they go dancing and do these things too because they're with them because they're in big family groups, uh, which you tend to get at like a Cumbia bar, but you don't get at like 23. Uh, but so that type of lifestyle, absolutely common and, and just expected that this is probably what you're going to do. If you're choosing not to go out and do activities like this, it is generally expected that what you're going to do is still be social. It's not that you're going to sit at home and watch TV. That's not the expected behavior. Whereas in, say, the United States or Canada, we would absolutely be like, so you're probably going to stay home, microwave some dinner and watch some television. That's the normal activity. That's the thing you do every day when you're not going out. When you don't have something special, that's the default. And here, that is not the default. It is for somebody, again, there's always that exception, but the majority of people are not looking to do that. TV is not the first thing that comes to their mind. They are going to instead be first bringing chairs out, grabbing a beer and sitting out on the sidewalk and waiting for neighbors to come by, enjoying some fresh air, talking with family members, friends that come by, whatever. And in some cases, this is what you do before you go out. That's absolutely normal. But some people stay behind, of course. I'm just feeling too tired or I'm trying to save money or I'm just just not in the mood for loud music, but even then you typically are putting loud speakers outside with you and playing music in the street, whatever, right? So it stays social, it stays with a lot of activities. And those people tend to be where the younger kids are staying at home uh, and hanging out with the people who do that. But you know, you can really sense how much society is about being social, being out and being with people. Um, and that's the underlying current of everything. It is so social. People look for every opportunity to be with other people. And in North America, I think in general, we default to every opportunity to be alone. And we joke about it. You look at memes on the internet, you're on Facebook or you're on Instagram, or whatever. You're going to constantly see these memes, um, you know, uh, highlighting how much society values its introvertedness and nothing wrong with that. But that's that's the theme you get from North America constantly when you see these memes in English that, you know, they're like, ha, ah, you know, going out is fun. Do you know, winning the lot is fun. But have you ever tried just not leaving the house? Right. And people identify with that constantly. And people are very much like, wow, I just love not seeing people and not being social and not going out. And when you get to Latin America, I think those memes fall 
very flat and people don't understand, like, why is that funny? Who feels that way? Right? Because it's exactly the opposite. People are like, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to be stuck at home. I get to go out. Being at home alone is sad and depressing in the Latin mindset, right? In the American mindset, it's like, oh, being around people requires you to have time alone to recharge. And the Latin culture is if you ever have to be without people, you need enough time with people to recharge so you can go for however much time you need to be alone to get your work done or whatever. And even that, like when you're when you're working, you, you often have people around. Whereas in the United States, if I'm working, I need to be alone, right? My culture, my upbringing is I need to concentrate and be alone. When I go to my office, I lock the door. I want everything. I want no interruptions, no one talking, no one around. And here, the majority of people doing the same job would be like doors open and always someone coming by and, and talking through the, right? And it's just, it's so different. And like, there's always multiple conversations going on. There's always music while people are talking, which for people like me is impossible. Like I cannot follow anything because I, I can't separate the voices from the music, especially in Spanish. It's so much harder. Uh, but even in English, even in America, if they do that, I have no idea what's being said. I cannot hear uh, the words. I can hear the voices, but I cannot hear the words inside the voices. Uh, it's very frustrating for me personally. But for most people, it's just something you get used to. But uh, this aspect of culture, I think, is super important. That, for those of you who are just looking to be tourists, it doesn't matter. For those of you who are considering a relocation, a digital nomadery, a, a coming to Nicaragua to experience the culture, this is something you should know ahead of time. If you find this interesting, if you find this attractive, and you're like, I want to experience that, then Nicaragua is going to probably work out really well for you. If you're coming and being like, I have no interest in that, I want to continue my lifestyle from North America, well, as long as you understand how that's different and that you are keeping it separate, then great. But if you're coming thinking that the lifestyle is going to be the same here, and it's easy to think that, right? This is a poor country. The ability to afford to go out is not there. So probably people stay home and, and you know, do the introverted thing, do the solitary thing at home. It much, much more than in North America, then you're in for a surprise because that is not what happens. And of course, a big piece of that is in North America, we expect that people live alone or nearly alone, right? You may have someone who lives with a significant other or maybe with a roommate or a sibling, but the idea that you're going to be old and live with your parents or let alone your grandparents, not very common and certainly not expected. Uh, we know that it could happen, but it's not the norm by any stretch. Even today, people talk about it. Oh, there's all these 22 year olds who have to live at home, but we still have a culture where if you're 22 and living at home, you're generally starting to have friction and there's a lot of like, uh, this isn't what I want to do. I need to move out and, and all that. But here, totally expect even if you're 30, of course you're living at home. Then why would you move out? That just isn't financially viable. It's not a smart way to do things when you live here and people just approach it very differently. Sorry, again, the camera overheated. That's the hardest thing we're dealing with. But the GoPro 12 has shipped and I believe I'm going to have the first GoPro 12 in Nicaragua, it arrives on the day that you guys will see this video. By the time you're watching it, it should be there within an hour or two. Possibly, actually, yeah, that's about right. So I think it's the first one that's gonna make it to Nicaragua, which is kind of cool to have the very first one, but it is supposed to handle overheating better than the 11 because they removed the GPS unit and a few things, so it does less, but overheats less. I don't use the GPS unit and I do overheat every day. So hopefully that makes an actual difference. Fingers crossed. But overall, the, the moral of this entire story is life in Nicaragua is about going out. It is a cultural thing. It is the natural reaction to a number of factors here. The living at home all the time makes going out just make a lot more sense. It is an opportunity to see people. It satisfies what people are looking for much more of the time. And for the majority of you, not all, but for the majority of you, when you move here, you're going to discover both that you are probably at a point in your lives where going out is something you're going to do more often, simply because that naturally occurs with people who move at a time like this, in a way like this, but also when you subject yourself to the Nicaraguan culture, you are going to find that you're going to be expected to go out or asked to go out or given opportunities to go out far more on average than you normally would. And so all of that comes together to create a, a different view of the world, a different potential lifestyle, and maybe that's something you don't want to participate in and you just need to stay home or it's not your thing. But for a lot of people who are either interested in going out and never did because it wasn't something they were able to do so easily, or perhaps it is people who 
we're always on the fence. I was like, well, it costs a little bit too much money. I'm not going to do it. Or I don't have people to go out with, or I don't have something to go out to. You're likely going to find that there are so many opportunities to go out, so many people going out, so much expectation of going out, and it's so cheap and easy that you may start doing it far more. And this will change your perspective on so many things. It'll change how you spend money, how you look at finances, how you look at going out, how you look at purchasing things, all that kind of stuff. And understanding that that is likely to happen is important when you're looking at moving, not because you have to do it, but because it may play a major role in how you view the place that you come to. If you're like, well, I really want to be a part of Nicaraguan culture and you don't want to go out, you're going to be like, oh, that's a huge part of what everybody's doing. If I don't do that, I'm missing this huge part of the experience. Uh, and it's something something to be aware of. So just just food for thought. And and it plays into yesterday's topic where, you know, a lot of people were wondering, in case you didn't see yesterday's video, just about dating in Nicaragua and um, understanding that all people, not all, but nearly all, are going out and doing these things and being social and, and seeing other people and just interacting socially so much more. People are on the sidewalk so much more. People are out walking so much more. You interact with people all the time socially, that uh, the the way that you view the dating world also is impacted by the fact that people are out so much and people are out so much because of the way that people date as well. Like those things just naturally play in together. Um, but you don't have things like the passeggiata in Italy where everyone goes out and walks the streets after dinner. That kind of thing isn't really here. But you do have where people sit out on the sidewalk and people wander about and people go places. So it's related. Like you can see a cultural heritage, but it has changed a lot coming to the new world and being in this part of it. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to be talking about is is Nicaragua really right for everyone? Um, we're going to be going into, you know, things that may push Nicaragua to not be the right choice for you. So look forward to that tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. Ask your questions below. Scroll down and just say hi. Ask away. Whatever. If you can, share on social media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. Just post your links there. Reddit. Let people know about the show. Tell your friends. Tell your family. And I will see all of you tomorrow.